Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for motion matching for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to take a final look at composites and look at the last feature, um, which is runtime splicing. Now, runtime splicing is a feature that helps fix a specific problem with cut clips in specific situations. It's not something for motion capture, so if you're using motion capture, you can skip this video. So, Cut clips have a lot of problems when it comes to motion matching, and, and that is by nature of the concept of motion matching. It demands continuity. One of those problems is when we get to the end of a move start animation, there is some mismatch in um, trajectory, and I won't go into the details of what the issue is, but I'll just show you. So if I do this left turn here, you can see that sometimes the leg well, I didn't get it that time. There we go. We can see this jitter. Now, what's happening there is the system's getting confused between, well, should it go to a walk forward loop or should it just go backwards and play a bit of the walk forward start again? And it's surprisingly a very difficult problem to solve. Now, obviously with motion capture, this isn't a problem because the animation just flows through from, um, from the walk forward start into the walk loop within the same clip. However, that's not possible with cut clips. So I've turned the runtime splicing off for this, um, for the demo for, to show you this. Now let's turn it back on and have a look. So I'll go to my composites and this particular walk is the walk forward start 90 left. And we can see we've got our two animations, our walk forward start 90 left and our walk forward loop in the after animations. Now we can now splice these two animations together at runtime. So MXM treats them as if they are one animation. Now it does this in both the pre-processing and at runtime. So to the system, this looks like just one animation that goes from the walk forward start to the walk forward loop. And if it only occurs if I check runtime splicing. Now it's really important that this animation flows directly into this after animation seamlessly without any blending. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Otherwise, do not use runtime splicing. So let's have a look at these actual animations and see what I mean by seamlessly flowing from one to the other. So this is my walk forward start left. Now I want to, to have a look at the last pose of this animation. It is about there. Okay. Now let's have a look at our walk forward loop. I'm actually going to lock that. Let's grab another inspector. And let's get our loop, unlock this one, and we'll have a look at the first pose of this animation. You can see now that these two animation poses are exactly the same. Therefore, if we play this um, walk forward start left uh, animation, and then without any blending, we just quickly switch to this animation, it's seamless, there's no jitter or anything. So that is the prerequisite for runtime splicing to work. In this case, it works, um, and it should work uh, for most animation sets. I don't know any animators that would not do this. Um, so that's that. Okay, so now that we understand that, we can check runtime splicing. Now, when should we use it? Well, firstly, you could take the approach of, okay, I'll use it when I see that jitter. Or you could take the approach, well, anything that is a, you know, a move start type animation, we're just gonna check runtime splicing provided we have those animations. Of course, you can't use it with extrapolate. In fact, the option will disappear if we get rid of our after animation and check extrapolate. So I'm gonna get my preprocessor back. And let's go to our walking and for all my walk forward starts, I'm just gonna check runtime splicing. Next, what do we have? Walk forward start 90 right. Now, you can runtime splice this, but I'm going to show you why in this particular case, the walk forward start 90 right doesn't require it. Um, and you'd notice that when we were playing the demo, it only happened on that left. Uh, it could happen on a walk forward start as well, but um, let's have a look. Walk forward start 90 right. I mean, I've lost it. There it is. Okay. So the difference between the left and the right is it takes an extra step. So where the, where the left turn animation ends about here, the right turn takes another step. And the reason he takes another step is so that this animation is seamless with the walk forward start. So there's actually enough animation here that the walk forward right start doesn't need 
this splicing. There's enough, there's just enough in that extra step to resolve the issue. However, just in case, I'm gonna check it because it's actually not gonna hurt. It'll just splice it together. If it doesn't need to, it'll switch to the loop animation and we're fine. Okay, back to my preprocessor. I'm gonna just check it on all these stats. You could technically do it for plants as well if you are having an issue. I haven't really seen it uh, much with plants. Um, but if you do, throw it on as long as it's uh, your animations are seamless. Walk forward, walk to run. I don't need it on that one. Okay, so that is all set up. You do not need it for um, stops. Never found a case where I've needed it for stops. Uh, so there we go. I'll pre-process that and we'll have a look at the demo and see if we've resolved that jitter issue. Okay, so if I go left, you can see there now it's seamless. We're not getting that jitter at the end of the walk forward start anymore and we shouldn't get it doing anything, uh, any kind of start movement with our walk. Now I've already left it on with the runs, so we already don't get that with the runs. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That is runtime splicing. It's really simple. It solves a particular issue with, uh, with cut clips. So I hope that makes sense, and I hope that helps you to get some less jittery animation. That about wraps it up for composites and the composite editor. I think we've covered all the features. Thank you all for watching. Hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one.